Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. All right, everybody, here we are once again. Zach from Friday Night Flies at Bass Pro in Tawasson. Um, so things are growing. We got a new uh, YouTube channel, so make sure you guys subscribe. Um, so we've kind of separate ourselves from Brad's page, which isn't a bad thing. We still love Brad. He's still a good guy. Um, we just wanted to keep Friday Night Flies a little bit separate because it is growing. Um, so just make sure you hop on over to the page and uh, hit subscribe, hit the little notification thing. That way you know when live shows are going live and we got new shows going on. Um, this way we can all add stuff periodically throughout the week, so it's just not on Friday. So we'll have fishing videos, we'll have all sorts of crazy stuff going on. Um, so yeah, so that's what's going on with us. Hope you guys enjoy that. Um, so yesterday, Jordan and I were out fishing a couple lakes along the Sea to Sky, and uh, lake number one, we're hitting some rainbows, stuff like that, on some leeches and bugger patterns, things like that, uh, damsel nymphs and whatnot. And then we hit a second lake, which has a bunch of cutties in it, and uh, same thing, fishing the same kind of stuff, because they're not that far away, and we're getting into some fish, and then uh, later on in the evening, we started knowing a bunch of little guys surfacing and stuff like that. So we put on some dries and had dry fly action for probably about two hours, which was super fun. The fish weren't huge, but any time a fish takes a dry, it's always a good time. So I'm going to do you guys up one of the little dry flies that I was fishing. It's a little mosquito-y kind of generic dry fly pattern. Super easy to tie, only uses two materials. Um, again, super easy to tie. So let's head on down and check it out. All right, guys, so there it is, this uh, generic little dry fly, mosquito-y pattern. Um, this is the brown version. This is not the one that I was fishing yesterday. I just figured it was kind of fun to type a couple different ones. This was the one I was fishing. So it's a black and grizzly variation. Same idea, just use a grizzly hackle, some black ice dub, and your thread. It's like I said, super easy fly to tie. Variations on this are quite endless, so maybe I'll uh, come at you with a couple dry fly patterns over the next couple weeks. So I'm going to do up the um, ginger version for you, the brown version. Again, pretty little deadly fly. There's a front view for you. Easy to tie up though. Um, so this is going to be one of the smaller flies I've tied for you guys. Thought I had a hook kicking around here somewhere. Apparently not. So I'm going to do this on a size 12. Some of you are probably cringing already, but it seemed to do the trick. So, you can take your favorite dry fly hook. This one just happens to be a Mustad 94-833 in size 12. I've done them in 10s, 14s, stuff like that. Um, tiny hook. Fish seem to like it, though. So for thread, I've just got some UTC-70, rusty brown. And I'm going to start my thread about an eye length back. And that's roughly going to be my gauge for where I'm going to stop all my materials, and then i got room for the head. So tying these smaller flies, it's definitely uh, good to give yourself a gauge and uh, kind of a mark to stop tying so that you have room for the head. With them being so small, it can be kind of tough sometimes. So... I've got a Mets number two ginger cape here. This guy's nice and pretty. Lots of really nice feathers on it. Hopefully that's showing up on there for you. So basically what I've done is up about the halfway, three quarter mark, I found a feather here. It's got some nice stiff fibers. It's not very webby. So you can see this kind of part here that's very full. That's the web. That's, that's what I mean when I talk about that. So basically I'm using the the feathers from the upper portion because they're going to be nice and stiff um, and they're basically just fibers so I'm going to take about know, I'd call that about an inch that I've stripped off there I've done two flies so I'm going to go about half an inch here and when I peel these off I'm going to make sure to keep the butts aligned because that keeps all the tips together and if they're not, I can just kind of gently push them. And it's just once, so I'm just going to pull it out. But you can usually push them, they'll all go together. So I'm just going to transfer these to my proper hand here. I want this tail to be about the length of the body. You can go a little bit longer if you like. I don't mind it being a smidge longer. So I'm just going to wrap that over. 
couple wraps at the back here. I'm going to go one wrap underneath. That just kind of pulls everything in place and locks it in, even splays some of the fibers out a little bit. I'm not liking that one right there. If I can get it here, that one's just a smidge longer. So that one's coming off. There we go. You know what? I'm even just going to trim these butt ends. Usually they're not too, too bad. Pull that up. I'm going to trim this about one third of the way back. That's going to be the length of my body. So I'm just going to lock those all down. Nice touching turns. Keep everything nice and neat. Now one third mark, that's where I'm going to start my hackle. So I'm just going to take this back down, help develop a little bit of a taper. Like I said, this is a super simple fly. You can knock out a bunch of these in no time at all. So I'm just going to make sure that tail's sitting right on top. As you can see, it's a little bit splayed out. It's totally fine. It's all going to aid in flotation. So I've got some uh, Ice Dub and Rusty Brown. I know Superfly makes a Diamond Dub. Same coloration. You can really mix and match to whatever you want. All those blacks. Whatever you feel like. So less is more when you're doing these bodies. You can always add more. That's not a problem. So I'll make just a really nice thin dubbing noodle here. And I'm just going to slide that up. Start that up. There we go. Just nice and easy. Just build a little tiny taper. And a little bit more there. Like I said, those little fish were just hammering this last night. We had a, a lot of fun catching them. Definitely caught bigger fish, but nothing beats a fish that's willing to take a dry fly, that's for sure. So there we go. You can see we got a little bit of taper going on. And that right there. You see the body's a little scraggly, so what we can do is we can kind of trim it. It's gonna get pretty beat up after a couple fish anyway. I noticed I was pulling part of the body off uh, the ones last night off because we fished them. So the teeth on those little guys are definitely munching away at it. So now I'm gonna select a fiber from the lower half. Usually they tend to be smaller at the bottom and then they get larger as they go up to the top. So I'm going to find one that's roughly, what hook was this, a size 12. So I'm going to find one that's more size for a size 10. Um, I like to oversize my hackle slightly. Let's just see if I can find one here on the first go. nice thing about this Griffin Mongoose vise is it comes with a hackle gauge. So I've just got that attached there. And that's one right there. I'll just pluck that away. And again, I'll just double check where those size 10 hackle fibers were, they're a little further down. So I'll just pull that, I'm just going to peel that away, expose some bare stem, that's going to be kind of my tie-in point. And tying this so the shiny side is facing forward towards the hook eye, and the side that's away from me, that's going to get the first couple wraps, I'm just going to strip off a couple of extra fibers, so you can see that there. That way it gives me, allows me to seat it how I want. So, I'm going to tie that in right on my side of the hook. And I'm going to wrap forward. I'm going to pull that stem back, give a couple wraps, take my thread back up to the hook eye, trim that away. If I can get that there. And take some little tiny hackle pliers here. And I'm going to. Attach that to the tip. And without smashing the camera here, I'm just going to start winding forward. So as we do this, there we go. And we're just going to do touching turns. Hit the camera lens there. It's tiny flies, you got to get nice and close. Alright, so nice touching turns all the way forward. We're going to use a good portion of these feathers, so they're going to float nice and high. The reason I like to use the synthetic dubbing on the body is that they don't retain water as much as naturals. So that's kind of why I went with the ice dub, plus it adds a little bit of sparkle. So I'm about half a hook eye, about a hook eye back from the hook eye now. So now I'm going to lock in that hackle. 
And I'm going to do a couple securing wraps. I'm going to pull it back, get a couple in front. I'm going to trim away that tip. Now save these tips because uh, there's a little mosquito pattern I'll maybe do next week. Um, I'll keep some of these grizzly tips that I've got here. You can still use these. We're going to use them as uh, wings if I do a uh, mosquito next week for you guys. So, I'm just going to really build up a little tiny head here. And I'm going to whip finish. Like I said, super simple pattern. If you haven't tied many dry flies, especially this kind of style, this is a good place to start. This gives you a good solid foundation. So let's trim away our thread. You know, I got one straggler fiber there that's sticking out the front. That's where these razor sharp Dr. Slicks come in handy. If I can get the fiber there, where the heck is it? Is it underneath? Oh, there it is. Alright, so I'm just going to trim that guy away. There you go. Nice, simple ginger dry fly. This is uh, another one that I've done here. As I drop it all over the place. That's the front profile there. Hopefully you guys can see that. So there you have it. Let's head on up and uh, sign out. All right, guys, there you have it. My super easy little dry fly pattern. Like I said, it's a good foundation for learning uh, some of the more advanced dry flies out there. So maybe I'll, uh, like I said, I'll start playing with this next week for you guys and see what else we can come up with. Uh, so I'd recommend get yourself at least a ginger cape. That's this guy here. And a grizzly cape. Those are going to be your top two used ones. Um, again, there's capes for every color under the sun, just like with everything, right? And you get all the dyed ones as well. That's a whole other ballgame. So that's a fun one to start out with. Like I said, super easy. Um, we've got half capes here in store. I'm sure Brad's got a couple up his neck of the woods as well. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Again, thank you for joining us on our new Friday Night Flies uh, YouTube channel. Um, Make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button, give us a follow, that way we know who's actually watching. I know there's quite a few of you guys, especially out on Facebook, that are hitting, up and hitting us up and uh, chatting with us all the time. We appreciate all that you guys do. We're growing, and it's all because of you guys, so we really appreciate all the support. So, uh, yeah, until next time, have some fun, tie some up, post some to our Facebook page. I'd love to see what you guys are coming up with. All right, see you guys next week.